welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. One of the most beloved of all books is Mother Goose. I dare say everyone in the world knows Ring Around a Rosie, Mistress Mary Quite Contrary, Ba Ba Black Sheep. Many of those nursery rhymes were based on actual fact. Ring Around a Rosie depicted death from the plague in the 14th century. Mistress Mary was commonly thought to be Mary, Queen of Scots, and Ba Ba Black Sheep was a protest of the common people against confiscation of property by the royalty. But I wonder what promoted Hickory Dickory Duck. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one, and down he runs. Hickory Dickory Duck. Charlie, look. The door to the clock. It's opening. All by itself. At this point, I believe anything. That cold air again, too. Look. Something sort of floated out of the clock. I thought, too. What was it? I don't know. I'm not sure I want to know. more popular American pastimes is attending garage and tag sales. There seems to be something about buying someone else's junk that fascinates most of us. But of course, not all garage sales offer junk. Some of them have some very usable merchandise. And occasionally, you might pick up a real antique. The garage sale we're about to visit now with Charlotte and Charlie Tucker contains the belongings of a recently departed minister, a bachelor who left his earthly possessions to his nephew, a Richard Lum. Let's join them on the lawn of the Lum's home in southern Pennsylvania. There's some real nice things here, Charlotte. I'm amazed at the prices. Everything's underpriced. <laughs> they probably want to get rid of it fast. See anything you like? Oh, it's all beautiful. I'd like to find a pretty lamp if there are any. Mother hates that one I have in the guest room. Oh, that's right. Yeah, she gets in day after tomorrow. And remember your promise, Charlie. No golf or cards for the two weeks Mother's here. You know she adores you. I think she makes her visits more to see you than me. Hey, I hope she brings her tarot cards. And that's another thing. No teasing her about her interest in the occult. The last time she read the cards for you, everything she said came true. You landed that job at the Cromwell Agency and made art director six months later. Yeah, but that might have been because... Can I help you with anything? I'm Mr. Lum. Oh, uh, well, I, I would be interested in a lamp. Lamps are up on the porch. My uncle had some lovely ones. Your uncle was the minister? Yeah, I was his only living relative, and he left all this to me. I, I really can't keep it. We have no room for it all. Uh, then this isn't his home? No, no. I live here. My wife and I carted the things from the parsonage in Milford. I'll leave you to browse. I hope you like one of the lamps. Mm. Hey, you want to head for the porch? Well, let's just stroll and look around. We'll get to the lamps. Hey, check that grandfather clock. That's an oldie. What a beauty. <laughs> it doesn't know what time it is. It just struck one and it's ten minutes to eleven. Looks so old. I bet it cost a fortune. Hey, you just wanted a lamp, remember? Oh, but I didn't mean we'd buy it. But it is awfully good looking. It's in great condition, too. Charlie, wouldn't it look perfect in the south corner of the dining room? It almost matches that antique hutch Mother gave us when she moved to Florida. Yeah, yeah, it would. But ask the price first before you start redecorating. Well, it'll probably be more than we can afford. It's got to be at least 100 years old. Older than that. I saw you admiring the clock. How much? I priced it at 200 uh, Not much call for grandfather clocks today in the newer homes. Rooms are smaller, more modern, and this one doesn't chime. But it just did. You say this clock struck? Yes, yes, just as we passed it. Well, that is extraordinary. $200, you said. We'll take it. Sold. Now, do you still want to see the lamps? Oh, uh, but yes, I still need one for the guest room. I'll help you to the car with the clock. Thanks. And I'll go and check out the lamps. They're on the porch, remember? I'll be back in a moment to help you move the clock. And a very beautiful one, too. Funny what he said about it never chiming, though. Isn't it? Careful now. Watch the chair. See it. Oh, the clock weighs a ton. Uh. 
I never found one this heavy. Okay, your end down first. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh there we are. Oh. Now, come around here and just steady her as we stand her up. Oh, it looks so much bigger inside here than it did on the lawn. It's a matter of perspective. Uh, there we are. Hmm. Oh, it is imposing, isn't it? <laughs> it looks better there than I thought it would. Well, let's polish it up first. Then see if you can get it going. Okay. Here, you rub it down with the linseed oil, and I'll do the glass on the door. Hey, this wood is fantastic. I can't tell what it is, but maple, maybe, or, or even oak? I think we found a steel today. Hey, you know, Charlotte, the grain in this wood has a sort of design to it. Hmm? Look, like foreign characters or something. Yes. I see what you mean. Oh. This looks like... A row of A's. Yeah, and see here? Look, here's a ram's head. But they're not carved. The wood's as smooth as glass. Yeah, well, it couldn't be paint. No. Could it be that the wood just... just grew that way? That's possible, I guess. But these figures are so... clear. It doesn't seem like an accident of nature. (gasps) Look, there are more on the other side. You don't really notice them until you look for them. This oil really brings out the color and the grain of the wood. I want to clean the inside of the door. Have you got the key? Oh, yeah. Uh, here in my pocket. Here. See, maybe these are some sort of uh, religious symbols, huh? They belong to a minister. But they don't look like... Charlie? Yeah? Put your hand inside here. Inside the clock? Go ahead. Feel it? Yeah. Yeah, the air is sort of cool and... And damp. I didn't feel that when we took the pendulum out to bring it home. But then the clock was out in the hot sun. Why would the air inside the clock be cooler than room temperature? It beats me. Oh, oh, Mike's awake. Uh, I'll have to heat up the bottle, darling. Yeah, you go ahead. I'll finish. Uh, I want to fool around with the works and see if I can get it going and figure out what goes with the chime. Hmm. <laughs> Speak of the devil. There it goes again. Second time this morning. You spent half of yesterday working on it. It's obvious there's something wrong with it that you can't fix. Oh, better hurry and finish your lunch. Mother's plane gets in in two hours. You sure you won't change your mind about coming along? No, and Mother won't mind. Mike's been so fussy and restless these past two days. I think he's coming down with something. Probably another tooth. And Tinker hasn't been around all morning. It's not like her to stay away so long. I'm going to go and look for her. Hey, cats do as they please, and you know it. But yesterday she wouldn't come in at all. She'd start up the porch steps, and then she'd arch her back and spit. She refused to come into the house. Oh, well, she'll be all right. Cats know how to take care of themselves. And I'd better get going. Traffic to the airport might be heavy. And wait till you see how your grandson's grown. He grows some every day, it seems. He'll be walking soon. He's ten months old tomorrow. <laughs> You'll be seeing him in about 30 seconds. We're home. Oh, there's Charlotte. Oh, she looks a little thinner, don't you think? Yeah, well, she's taken up jogging. Oh. Hi. Hello, darling. Oh, Mother. Oh, how good to see you again. Mm. Oh, you look wonderful. And feel it, too. Oh, I'm so sorry about not coming to the airport. Oh, that's all right, dear. What's the difference? Now, put your bags in your room, Mother. Thanks, Charlie. How was the flight? Oh, rough and bumpy. I skipped the food and stuck with my old fashioned. We're cooking out tonight. You'll get one of Charlie's steak special. Oh, that'll be nice. Charlie tells me you've taken up job. What's the matter? Mother, what is it? I feel... Charlie! Mother, are you sick? Here, sit down. No, 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 I'm not sick. I never felt it in this house before. What do you want? Felt what? A... A force. Very, very faint. What's the matter? What... A kind of force. When I stepped inside the house, it brushed me ever so lightly. Oh, I could even be mistaken. Hey, what is this? Do you feel it now? No, 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 not at all now. Come on upstairs and lie down. You said you hadn't eaten. Maybe that's it. No, I don't need to lie down, dear. I... Oh, I shouldn't have alarmed you. It, it was nothing. I want to see my grandson. Are you sure you're all right, Mother? Of course. Now, where is that Mike? Well, he's still sleeping. 
But it's almost time for his dinner. All right. I'll go upstairs, unpack and freshen up. You can look in on him. He might even be awake. I'll just tiptoe in and see. I'll be down in a little while. Hey, what was she so upset about? I, I still don't understand. Neither do I. She said she felt a, a, a force, but then she tried to brush it off as, as though it wasn't anything at all. Yeah, I heard. It kind of bothers me, though. Mother is sensitive to those things, but what kind of force could be in our house? You think that's what... You think that's what's spooking Tinker? You said she's gone again. I don't know. I, I certainly don't feel anything. No, neither do I. And you know how I feel about psychic phenomena. Huh? <laughs> Look, if Mom doesn't bring it up again, let's forget it. I hope I can. Are you going to work a while? I'm going to bed. Just a minute or two. I want to look at this new hosiery layout and then sleep on it. Mother and Mike are both dead to the world. Those flights always tire her. Hmm. Charlie, did Mother say anything more to you about her feelings? I mean, about the force, as she calls it, and the clock. No, not really. Uh, just that she thought the marks on the clock were ancient symbols or something. Yes. Remember how she dismissed it while we were having dinner? I couldn't pin her down to a direct answer. So she doesn't want to make you nervous. Well, it only makes me more nervous. There's something I didn't mention. When I told her we thought the cool air inside the clock came from the type of wood, she said that could be one explanation. Oh, she has another? She wouldn't say. Charlotte, hey, you didn't mess around with my drawing board, did you? What? I never go near it when you're working on a layout. Well, the sketch I did yesterday is all smudged. Look. Well, darling, I have no idea how it that didn't could... blow to the floor, maybe. Uh, you picked it up? No, or... absolutely not. I've told you. Well, how could something no one touched smudge up like that? I mean, these inks don't blur. Charlie, I give you my word. I, I know, Charlotte. I'm not accusing. I'm, I'm just mystified. I'll have to do the whole thing over again in the morning. Well, come into bed then. Yeah, yeah, I'll be right in. Gee, that's strange. It just couldn't happen like that. Charlie. Charlie, wake up. Charlie. What? What? What's the matter? It's the clock. Listen. It hasn't stopped. Usually it's only one or two strokes. Supernatural. You're going down there? Of course. Well, I'm coming with you. I heard you two in the hall. What's the matter with the clock? Well, that's what I'm going to find out. I'll stop that chiming if I have to break the whole damn mechanism. I'd be very careful, Charlie. Now, take my advice and don't touch it. I'm going to do something to stop the chimes. It's, it's gone haywire. Do as Mother says, Charlie, please. Don't touch it. But it looks like I don't have to. It stopped. Hey, wait. Do you feel that? Yes. A little gust of cool air? Yeah. Damp. I'm going into the dining room. Uh-oh. That's where it's coming from. The front of the clock's open. Look. <gasps> the whole room's cold. Something opened that door to the clock. Something? Well, it couldn't have been someone, could it? Charlotte, put on some coffee. It's time we faced facts. And high time, I'd say, wouldn't you? Whether Charlotte and Charlie want to admit it or not, there's something strange going on in their home. Charlotte's mother realizes it and realized it the moment she set foot in the house. So while the coffee's brewing in the Tucker household at 2.15 a.m., we'll take a short break ourselves. Things 
Things always seem more sinister in the middle of the night, don't they? At two o'clock in the morning, our little fears are magnified many times. And at 2.15 this morning, in the brightly lighted kitchen of Charlotte and Charlie Tucker, the sinister happening of the past few moments hangs heavily over the three figures huddled over their coffee. There is something strange in this house, Charlotte. Something psychic. Oh, really? Now, wait. I know you both take my interest in parapsychology lightly. Oh, you have every right. I'm not going to make light of it, Mother. Not after this. You never did tell me your explanation for the cool air in the clock. Well, I don't know what causes that. Mm. But something psychic is developing in this house. Developing? I felt it the moment I came in yesterday afternoon. I tried not to make too much of it. I avoided your questions. But I'm too concerned now. I really am. But why? Why why would our house all of a sudden be (laughs) possessed, if that's what you mean? And what's the clock got to do with it? Well, I think whatever it is in this house, started when you brought that clock home. For what reason? Well, again, I have to say, Charlie, I I don't know. Have you noticed anything else strange in the house? Other than that peculiar behavior of that clock? Well, the baby's been awfully restless lately. I I mean, more than usual. And Tinker, she wouldn't come in the house yesterday. She's run off Uh and... Charlie, your layout. Oh, now you've got me wondering. What was that about a layout? Oh, it's a hosiery ad I've been working on. It's been smudged, and nobody in the house could have done it. Except perhaps a spirit. Oh, Mother. Well, now that seems even more unlikely. How could a spirit smudge a physical drawing? Poltergeists can actually hurl furniture around. Oh, we've got poltergeists? Charlie. Charlotte, I'm very serious. I think you should call in a psychic investigator. A ghost breaker. You are serious. Very much. Now, there's a particularly good one I know of. Oh, I don't know him personally, but he has an international reputation. Now, he might be interested in this. I thought these guys just prowl around old English mansions. Oh, far from it, Charlie. They're willing to make a preliminary examination almost anywhere. And they can usually tell right away if there's a hoax involved. Or if it's just coincidental events. I personally think there is nothing coincidental here... Well, how would we get in touch with this uh, investigator? His name is Paul Carlton. Yes, the American Society for Psychical Research could get in touch with him. Oh, they'd be sure to be interested, too. Charlie, do you think we should go that far? It scares me. Charlie, the sooner this thing is brought out in the open, the better. Well, I'm with you, Mother Lee. I'm all for this Paul Carlton having a look. If he's willing to come. Would you like me to get in touch with him? Yes. All right. I'll call the society for you first thing in the morning. Hello? Mrs. Lee? Yes? Paul Carlton. The society gave me your message. Oh, yes, Mr. Carlton. Thank you for calling. Not at all. I'm very interested in all you told them. When may I examine the house and the clock? Oh, just a minute, please. Charlotte, he wants to see the house. When can I tell him? Well, the sooner the better. Tomorrow, if you want. Uh, Mr. Carlton. Yes? Any time is fine with us. Well, I have a speaking engagement in Philadelphia tomorrow night. I could be there a day after tomorrow. Say, ten in the morning? Yes, any time. And Mrs. Lee, today and tomorrow, be very alert to anything else that occurs in the house. The more details, the better. I understand. I'll see you Thursday morning. Here he is. There's a cab pulling up out front. Oh, I'm so nervous. You and me both. (laughs) He's just going to look around, isn't he? I mean, he's he's not going to conjure up a lot of evil spirits. Of course not, Charlie, but I'm anxious to see if he confirms my feelings. Well, uh, look, we might as well go out and welcome him. Uh, We know he's here. Mr. Colton. Uh, Hello. Uh, Mr. Tucker? Yes, uh, welcome. We appreciate your coming. Oh, thank you. But I'm the one who's appreciative. Come in. Uh, This is my wife, Charlotte. How do you do? My pleasure, madam. And my mother-in-law, Mrs. Lee. Ah, yes, we spoke. Oh, it's an honor to meet you, Mr. Carlton. I've read both your books. Oh, thank you. You're interested in parapsychology, then? Well, I I dabble. Now then, let's get to work. Uh, May I see this celebrated clock? Right there in the dining room. 
Follow me. Ah, yes. A beauty, isn't it? Certainly an antique. Charlotte, he didn't feel anything strange, like I did. He might have, and not mentioned it. Uh, Mrs. Lee, uh, you were right about these characters in the wood. Oh, they are symbols, then. Oh, I was pretty sure. Uh, would you open the door, please? I want to examine inside. Sure. We've kept it locked ever since that experience the night before last. Well, I want to get into that in more detail later. Mm-hmm. There you are. Hmm. Yeah, it's definitely cooler. I'll just shine my pocket flash in here. Doesn't seem to be any reason for it. Good heavens. What is it? Your voice, it's uh, echoing like a canyon. What do you mean? Well, when your head was inside the clock, your voice echoed. Show me. You speak in there. All right. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. That is extraordinary. I didn't hear my own voice like that. As though you and Charlie were talking into a long tunnel. Hmm. The inside is solid all around. Sound should be muffled. There is something psychic about it, isn't there, Mr. Carlton? Well, at this point, let's say there is need for more explanation. I'm going to take another look. Solid wood inside, all right. Ah, there's a name etched in here. Probably the maker. Might give us a good clue. Can you read it? Yes, it's faint. S-A-R-G-A-T-A-N-A-S. Saga or something? Well, it's either a wry joke or... What is it? Saga Tennis, Mrs. Lee. In witchcraft. Oh, yes. One of the devil's lieutenants. Brigadier, to be exact. Yes. Saga Tannis, whose specialty is opening locks. Devil. Brigadier. Really? You do have a curiosity here, Mrs. Tucker. There's much justification for further investigation. I thought so. Uh, With your permission, I want to return with a medium I work with frequently. She's gifted and brilliant. Enormous sensitivity. You mean mean a seance? Oh, not exactly. But if the strange qualities of the clock are the result of spiritual forces, Margaret Egan will know it. Charlotte? Well, we've gone this far. We might as well. Now... Keep the door to the clock locked, as you have done. Uh, By the way, has the cat returned? No. Uh, That's a very definite sign. Animal behavior is almost always an indication of the unseen. I'd like to go over the entire house now, and then I'll be in touch with you after I talk with the medium. Margaret, it's Paul Carlton. Oh, hello, Paul. Uh, How are you? Fine. I have a job for you, a fascinating case. It's a home in Pennsylvania. Everything centers around an old clock with the name Sargatanus etched on the inside. Sargatanus? I thought that would impress you. The devil's locksmith. When can you work with me? Oh, any time. Perhaps the sooner the better. Good. We'll drive down tomorrow. I'll fill you in on the details on the way. Is there anything special you'll need, Mrs. Egan? Uh, No, Mrs. Tucker, no, 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 just a a comfortable chair. Uh, I might explain that hopefully, through Margaret's trance, we'll be able to learn the nature of the spirit that inhabits the clock. Are you serious? Oh, very much so. Oh, there is a spiritual force at work in this house, Mrs. Tucker. I felt it the moment I entered. We believe it's the only explanation for the phenomena you've experienced. Well, but you're not going to uh, make anything appear, are you? Oh, no, no, Mrs. Tucker. This is not a seance. Uh, no hand-holding or dim lights. In my trance, if I can contact my guide, we may be able to learn how to deal with whatever force is in here. Why don't we get started, Margaret? I am ready. Just let me relax a moment. Leona. Leona. 
We need your help, Leona. I am here. This is Leona. What can you tell us of Saga Tanis? Why do you wish to know? We believe he's at work. Saga Tanis is imprisoned. He has been in prison for 103 years. We have reason to think he's at work. Impossible. We have in our possession a clock with his name etched into the wood. Silbert, therefore Dundee... What? Speak again, Leona. Board to prom. She's losing contact. Leona... Leona, can you hear me? Sargatanus imprisoned. Charlie, look. The door to the clock. Yeah, it's opening. All by itself. That cold air again, too. Look. Something floated out of the clock. <gasps> I saw it, too. What was it? I don't know. I don't want to know. She said she wouldn't make anything appear. Margaret. Margaret. Huh? Huh? What? Huh? Huh? Oh, did I make contact? Briefly. We lost her. Mr. Carlton, look at the clock. Yes. I saw it opening during the trance. Then you saw something float out while you were talking to Mrs. Egan. Something floated out of it? Yes. Oh! <gasps> An ectoplasmic manifestation. There was a manifestation of some sort. But all we got from Leona was gibberish. Except at the beginning, when she said Sargatanus was imprisoned. Oh, I've got more work to do. I don't have the strength for another trance now. But I want to consult my books and my charts. I've got to do more research on Sargatanus. And that does seem to be the key to this. Yes, I think so. But what was it that came out of the clock? Is it still here? Very likely. Look, I, I think we're going too far with all of this. Oh, it would not be wise to stop now. Are you going to get rid of these spirits for us? Well, we cannot promise that. What we are trying to do now is identify them. We don't care how they're identified. We want them out of our house. I know how you feel, Mrs. Tucker, but try not to be frightened or discouraged. So far... There seems to be no evil spirit involved. Playful, perhaps. And often they'll simply leave a dwelling of their own accord. But we do want to continue our investigation. All right. We'll go along with anything. Only please, the sooner you can clear this up, the better. Oh, yes, we'll, we will be in touch in a few days after my research. Is there anything I can do to help? I'm so fascinated by all this. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Lee. But at the moment, I don't think so. Just be alert to anything that may happen. You'll hear from us very shortly. Paul Carlton here. Paul, it's Margaret. I think we have stumbled on the case of the century. Explain. Sargatanus is the key, all right. Now, can you get in touch with the people the Tuckers got that clock from? Well, I don't know. I, I suppose so. Why? Well, if my calculations are correct... Yes? ...and the information I have so far points to it, that clock the Tuckers bought used to be known as the Gate to Hell. certainly glad she said used to be. Although, with all those strange goings-on at the Tucker household, I wonder if someone or something is trying to open the gate again. But why? Why now, all of a sudden? And why pick on the innocent Tuckers? I don't have the answers, but perhaps someone or something will when we return with Act Three. Dante's Inferno, the poet tells us, 
The inscription above the entrance to hell is, Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Well, that inscription is not on the antique clock purchased by Charlie and Charlotte Tucker. Only the strange name Sargatanas, supposed to be a disciple of the devil. But our medium friend, Margaret Egan, thinks the clock was an entrance to hell, which seems surprising. For if I were to imagine an entrance to hell, I'd picture it in some deep jungle, arctic waste, desolate mountain range, or perhaps even a New York City brownstone house. Hardly a clock. Oh, it's becoming more incessant, isn't it? Oh, it's really driving me crazy. I want Charlie to get rid of it. Just take it anywhere. Destroy it. I'd let Paul Carlton and Margaret Egan have another go at it first. They're coming tomorrow, aren't they? Yes. And I hope this... What's the matter? There he is again. Who? That man crossing the street. I saw him yesterday. At least I think it's a man. Well, so? Look at him. Hunchback. So oddly dressed as though he were... Trying to hide his entire body. Now, why should you think anything of it? I had the feeling he was watching our house. Oh, now, Charlotte, I know we're unnerved by what's been happening, dear. I know. I'm imagining all sorts of things. Oh, I hope these people can solve something for us tomorrow. I can't go on like this. I know I suggested having them in. But maybe it's just intensified things. It's simple, really. If the clock is spooked, we get rid of the clock and the spooks along with it. I'm not sure it's as simple as that. Oh, you're sounding like them. I'm going to the village, dear. You want anything in particular? What about Wolf Bane and Frankincense? I wish I could laugh at that. (gasps) Oh, dear. Here he comes. Who? What? Yes, he's coming up the walk. That oddly dressed man. I saw him yesterday. He has been watching the house. Well, I'll see what he wants. Don't let him in. I, I have a strange feeling, that's all. Yes? I must see the clock. What? Who are you? What do you want? I must see the clock. How do you know about our clock? I must see it, please. If you take that scarf off your face, maybe I can understand you better. Get rid of him, Charlie, please. I know about your clock, which chimes. I have heard the chime. I must see it. Are you an antique dealer? No. What do you mean you've heard the chime? Charlie, don't. May I just see it? Then I'll leave. I'll leave. What do you know about it? Perhaps a great deal. Well, maybe you could answer some questions for us. About the clock. Perhaps. Well, just a look then. In the dining room. Come in. Charlotte. Look, he just may be able to shed some light on this. How do you know about the clock? That's what I want to know. I have heard it chime. Ah, yes, there it is. At last. Charlie, what is he doing? Now, look, wait a minute. Look, you can't open that door. It's locked. At last, after all these years. He opened it. Hey, what what the... Good heavens, he's stepping in. Hey, get out of there. What the devil do you think you're doing? I'm going to summon the others. Ah! He disappeared. He just disappeared. Wait, it didn't happen. I can't believe it. It didn't happen. It's empty. The guy is gone. But, uh, hey, look in here. I, I'm not staying at this house another man. Charlotte, wait a minute. Charlie, we better call Paul Carlton at once. They can get a plane. We don't dare wait until tomorrow. Did you get a look at his face at all? No. No, he kept it wrapped up in a muffler type of a thing. Mm-hmm. And he vanished inside the clock. Yeah, like that. We'd better begin. Yes. I'll I'll try harder. Paul, be sure to press Leona for details. I'll try for a deeper trance. You still haven't told us who you think that creature was. I'm sick with fear now. We understand, Mrs. Tucker. Uh, believe me, this is the most unusual case Margaret and I have ever worked on. You have every right to be nervous. I think we'll have some of the answers in just a few minutes. But who or what was that creature that disappeared inside the clock? That wasn't possible. But we all saw it happen. Well, now, now, let's see what develops in Margaret's trance. You know what the creature was, and you won't tell us. We didn't see it, Mrs. Tucker. How can we know what it was? Please, let us get on with the work at hand. Yeah, I think we should, Charlotte. All right, all right. I'm sorry. Go into your trance and tell us how to put an end to this evil thing. (laughs) 
Leona? Leona, are you there? Leona? I am here. There is much concern here. Much excitement. Leona, Saga Tannis. Saga Tannis has returned. His imprisonment is over. There is so much excitement here. Help us, Leona. Tell us. Saga Tannis is telling them. His way to the world was through the clock. His gate to hell. Go the tree, lemon. Uh, Leona, Leona, please. One hundred and three years ago, the clock was bought by a minister. Sagatanus was ecclesiastically imprisoned. The clock with his name inside it. Yes, the clock is one of the gates to hell. She was right. Margaret was right. It chimes to reveal its whereabouts. For 103 years, the gate was closed. Ecclesiastically closed. Now the gate is free. The clock strikes to let Sargatanus know where it is. To let the demons know the way is again open. Now, Leona, I am in the presence of the clock. It is here, in the next room. It is the way. Sargatanus has come to summon the others. The others? For what? What others? The way is now open from hell to earth. The clock strikes to lead the demons to the exit. When? How soon? The way is open now. Soon. Dobbit, transit. Uh, Le- Leona, when? When? Dobbit, gone. Oh, oh, we're you. losing contact again. What in the world does she mean? Well, you heard. The clock is a gate to hell. Every chime is summoning an evil spirit. All right, look, I've had enough of this mumbo-jumbo. I know there's something wacky going on, but all this seance business isn't helping at all. Now, it's making things worse. Charlie, please. What what, what happened? Oh, did we make contact? Yes, Leona confirms what you thought, Margaret. The clock is a gate to hell. (gasps) She said that? Yes. Oh, it's true, then... Oh, I was sure of it. Oh, but what, what, what is going to happen? Uh, Mrs. Tucker, we must get that clock out of this house and into a church as quickly as possible. Paul. Yes? Did Leona say anything about an emergence? No, she just said the way is now open. It will be soon. Oh, dear Lord, we've got to move fast. Are you really serious? Mr. Tucker, if we do not get that clock out of here and onto hollow ground soon, believe me... All hell will literally break loose. Listen to it. It's calling. Oh, get it out. I'll be glad to get rid of it. Charlie. Charlie, we better do what they say. All right. I'll be glad to see the end of the damn thing, too. That's what it is. It is damned. Oh, do hurry. Give me a hand, Paul. It's, it's not heavy. I'll call the church. Reverend Child is probably there now. No, he's not going to believe this. Yeah, uh, tip it toward me. I'll go bring the station wagon around. It isn't moving. I can't... Uh, uh, well, well, lay it on its side. Uh, we'll, we'll carry it. I can't budge it. What? We brought it in with, without any trouble at all, but I... And now I, I... I can't move it. Well, here, let me get on your side. All right? Now, push. I won't budge. You've got to get it out. Well, we can't move it an inch. Well, well throw your weight against it with me. Now. <clears throat> It's no use. Oh, Saga Tannis is having his way. Is there anything you can do, Mrs. Egan? I am a medium, not an exorcist. Unless that clock is on hollow ground... The child says to bring it. He didn't understand what I was talking about, but he... We can't budge it. What do you mean? The clock is rooted to the floor. Oh, dear heaven, what are we going to do? I'm going to smash it to bits. Oh, that's impossible now, I think. Look. The clock. (gasps) Flames inside. Oh, Oh, The fires of hell would have on the way. The whole house may go up. The baby, Mike, is upstairs. I'll get him. Get out. Everybody out. My baby. I've got to get my baby. Get out, Charlotte. I'll get Mike. Come with me, Charlotte. Hurry. All hell is breaking loose, and we can't stop it. If only I've gotten the connection soon. Saga Tannis. Oh, I should have seen it right away. The flames are spreading. Come on, Margaret. We must get out with the others. Everything's gone. Everything. 
And this is only the beginning, I'm afraid. My baby, we're safe now. Shh. We're safe, Mrs. Tucker. But I wonder for how long. What do you mean? This is not the end of it. Look! Oh, oh my. The Anderson's house is going up, too. There is no escape. It's too late. The world is doomed now. Hell hath triumphed. <laughs> Dickory, dickory, doom. A clock stood in a room. The clock struck well to summon hell. Hickory, dickory, doom. I couldn't resist a little parody on the popular nursery rhyme. Something to bring us back to the real world. To realize that such things just don't happen. Do they? Uh Uh-oh. I'll be back shortly. I see by the old clock in the corner that our time is up for now. The next time you happen on a grandfather clock, I hope you'll take a peek inside. If you feel cold, clammy air in there, I'd suggest you tell whoever owns it to get rid of it quickly, preferably to a nunnery. That is, if there's still time. Our cast included Tony Roberts, Patricia Elliott, Sam Gray, and Joan Shea. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Uh, See, Carlo. There is no doubt. This is a Lucifer man. Lucifer? You mean the devil, Satan? It was not always so that Lucifer meant evil. In ancient Latin, Lucifer meant bringer of light. The morning star. But this animal uh, groveling under the floor here, you're not saying he's a saintly man. He is a slave of Satan. <laughs> See the way he looks at me. It knows I am its master. This creature is centuries old. Get up, demon soul. Stand up on your two real legs. I shall will you now to answer me. Yes. Speak now of a later time in your existence. What are you? This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.